Hey everybody, we're going to be starting a new series this coming Sunday and I want to get us a little bit ready for that and I'll start with a story, a true story. This happened quite a while back when we still had the portables, if you remember that, who remembers when we had the offices in the portables and Derek and I were the only ones working at the church building on this particular afternoon. I was in my office and Derek was in the main auditorium setting up for worship and a gentleman stopped by. Now, this does not happen to us very often because like we're way out in the boonies by a cornfield, but this guy was from the downtown core and he was clearly street involved, perhaps homeless. And he was kind of disoriented. He came into the church building, the main building, encountered Derek looking for some help. Now, because he was a little disoriented, Derek wasn't quite sure, and neither were both of us for quite some time, what he needed. Uh, he started telling his story, and it was kind of hard to know exactly what he was asking for. And at one point, Derek is like, I think maybe Ruth Ann might be able to be of some help to us. So he brought him into the portable and introduced me as the pastor and then for safety reasons stuck around. And Derek and I listened to this gentleman for quite some time. Uh, first of all, it was the kind thing to do, but also it was hard to know exactly what he was asking of us. Uh, eventually, Eventually, we would just offer him a ride. Derek was going to drive him back down to the downtown core because apparently he got on a bus, got himself all disoriented on the wrong bus and ended up like way out by our church and really didn't even know where he was. But it took us a little while to figure that out. And while he was talking to us and kind of basically telling us his life story, he started to con refer to Derek as the pastor and me as the church secretary. Now this was in spite of the fact that Derek, like I said, had introduced me as the pastor and even corrected him the first time he made the mistake, but it didn't really stick with him and he continued to refer to Derek as your pastor here and you know being the church secretary you would understand kind of questions and you know it was Understandable, perhaps. Uh, first of all, there's the gender thing where he found Derek, where he found me, and the fact that he was a little bit confused. And so it was all understandable. And I know he did not mean any harm at all. And Derek certainly was not doing anything to encourage this. But I had just only started to wear the pastor title at that point. And I remember thinking that I just, like, I did not want titles to be important to me. I did not want that. In fact, I, I kind of don't even like it if people are using their titles kind of in an upfront kind of way. And yet, for this guy to keep referring to me as the church secretary, it was disturbingly annoying. So what's going on in that for me? right there. I think it has a lot to do with humility. Prepare to get a little messy. This Sunday we're going to be starting a three-week series where in fact I'm actually hoping that we will together experience the kind of dis disequilibrium that kind of forces us to go deep. The kind that calls us into deeper places of spiritual maturity. The series is called Upside Down and Inside Out, The Counterintuitive Ways of Spiritual Formation. And in it, we are going to explore some upside down and inside out perspectives that are going to press us into places that aren't quite so comfortable because they're counterintuitive. Because they challenge what might be considered maybe default settings in our humanity. Default settings like self-promotion or um, ridding ourselves of weakness or at least pretending like we have no weaknesses 
or making sure that we maintain some sort of control or power or superiority over others. All very natural human tendencies that we do all the time without really being all that aware of it. Instead, counterintuitively, during this series, we're going to press into what it means to be hungering for humility and welcoming weakness and strengthening submission. Paul will be our guide in this. It's my hope that over the next three weeks we'll be led by the Holy Spirit's work in the life of Paul, in the stories of his life, highlighting one story each week, and also in the writings of Paul, as inspired by the Holy Spirit, which make up a large portion of our New Testament. And what I've been hoping for and praying for in all of this is that together we might experience an encounter with the Holy Spirit on these issues, on these counterintuitive matters that will bring us face to face with ways in which our souls still need to be formed into the likeness of Christ. And once we do, once we get there, once we have our awareness awakened, then we have a choice, right? We can work with the Holy Spirit or not. We can cooperate with growing into the likeness of Christ or not. So in this series, I hope that there's tension. I hope we feel the tension. I hope there'll be attitudes in your heart and in my heart that will be challenged things that need to change if we really are going to be following Jesus the way we say we want to be and to be about his mission, the mission that he's called us all to. We'll do this together. Uh, our spiritual formation is not something that happens in a vacuum. We need each other. We need our community, especially in these days. We need the grace and accountability of each other so that we can keep growing. So if you're ready for any of that, I invite you to tune in Sunday morning. The service premieres at 10.30 a.m. Hungering for Humility is where we'll begin on this journey. And if you wanted to get a heads up on the reading and just be a little bit prepared, you might want to take a look at Acts chapter 28, 1 to 10 and Philippians 2, 1 to 11, between now and then. Let's see where this takes us. I love you, I miss you, I'm praying for you all.